what happens when you have above grade slopes that are not stable and a creek down below? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. Uh, this is a particular site where we're going to put in some, um, some erosion control. You can see here there's a hill here where vehicles need to move because they're going to go down and access the lake. But the uh, ground is not very stable because it's a lot of clay. So what are we going to do? Well, already honey locusts are starting to do the job of stabilizing the ground. I did an earlier video about honey locusts and how you can train them to make posts. We're going to not want to dig these up. We're going to want to train them and crowd them to make posts. By training them, we're going to uh, ask the plants to, to go upright by either staking them in or, or, or tying them down. And then we're going to cut out any of the... Uh, the side shoots. So if there's three or four trunks, we're gonna we're gonna uh, favor one trunk, put a stake next to it, make it upright. Now, that's gonna solve some of the problem because the honey locust has got a big webbed uh, root system um, that tends to spread if you cut the plant off at the ground. It's like a bamboo. Uh, it's just not a grass. But to crowd it, what we'll do is I already see a pine in there, so we'll make sure the pine comes in. We're gonna make sure there's some rows of of uh, different types of trees that are that we we want to crowd this area and force those honey locusts straight up. But, but we wouldn't put in willows up here. Willow is very often used for a uh, erosion control, um, but we wouldn't put it up here because their, their roots wouldn't stay as wet as they need to be. So we wanna look around in the woods here and find other trees that'll do well here and possibly um, kind of stake off this area a little bit to slow down the erosion, put in some rows of trees, mulch around those trees, and start, start the basic stabilizations with a tree system. But we don't want those trees to be so big that we still can't get a vehicle down here because you can see the road splits. And so we come down the hill here and we also have, there's a road on the other side that goes back further in the property. We essentially want to have trees and shrubs to hold soil in place with a good strong cover crop. And that would come all the way down here. So we would cut off the branches on a lot of the trees over top and I, I see there's some running water right here. Uh, so we would, we would want to get that in place. And then we would do a little tiny bit of grading about how we want this water to move down this hill. Because it's always going to move down a slope like this. we got to be mindful of it. Uh, so we just want to slow it down. So that grading might, uh, might run the water across this way. Okay. So to run it this way might be a couple bumps in the road. It might be uh, logs. It might be a culvert. Depends on really just depends on what the the owner wants to do and it depends on what's appropriate for how they're going to use this land this land comes down to a fishing hole and there's a little fishing hole down here and so they want to be able to access it easily and without a bunch of disruption now see this hill gives you a good example of a good let it be erosion management so we can favor some of the plants in here we can also put in more grasses because we do have the light and so there might even be the need for a geotextile, a biodegradable geotextile, or uh, patching out some kind of grass. Now, we don't want it too slippery. Rock or gravel might be okay, but again, that channel of water coming down here, we want to slow it down and possibly slow it into a basin here so that it can go out. Into, it looks like it's going to go out to the woods over here. Just got to slow it down. Um, but this hill can be planted out with shrubs, small bushes and such like that because you want to be able to get around it and not have a bunch of trees grow on it. So what will probably happen is that hill, after it's been meshed, you know, you can use a burlap mesh, you can start getting some native grasses and maybe even wildflowers in there. Uh, it'll look more like this. You see this area in here? This area can be bush hogged once a lifetime or uh, once every couple of years, if at all. And eventually you're going to have some trees come up in it and now you can just favor the trees you want to keep. Like this uh, lo honey locust, you want to keep one stem of it, but then you want to get it up high enough and pollard it. This tree right here, you can have as many, you know, you can have, uh, uh, looks like a Rosa Sharon or, or hibiscus, but I, I don't think it is. The, you, you might want to uh, take, this, take one of them out of the ground and move it and then favor the other one. I also saw blackberries in here. So it might be a matter of liming this soil to get this cover to, to pick up. Now, here's another area. This area has a kind of a steeper slope. It is down slope and it looks like it has running water on it or at least moisture in it. This will be perfect 
for willows. I've got a bunch of willows that we can put starting at the bottom in, in contour rows, cutting across this area, and then work our way back up. There might be a need a little...